Glory to God. One more time for your pastors and for Apostle Dennis. Even as we, before we have our seats, I want you to turn to a few people and just high five them and tell them, welcome to the house. Amen. And you may have your seats in the presence of God. My name is Pastor Lee. Uh, I'm privileged to be here today. I know we don't have much time. Maybe we can do the pleasantries tomorrow and or in the evening. But right now, I want to just get into it. I want to begin us on a journey um, on the world, the spiritual world that is a world of transactions. I'll see where we can get to and then tomorrow we can continue from there. So... If you're going to write a title, write spiritual transactions. Spiritual transactions. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will need more than one response. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, the spiritual world is a world of transaction. And there are few things that move in the spirit outside of exchange. Even when men don't realize, there is always the trading of one thing for another in the spirit. Um, even when men are sleeping, the sun will rise somewhere when it is setting somewhere else. Um, it's good to see you, Pastor Sylvester. <laughs> Wonderful to see you. We celebrate you, man of God, and we love you. Amen. Even when men do not realize, there are always spiritual transactions taking place through thoughts, through actions and through our words. I need you to be uh, attentive this afternoon. Some things will only happen when something is done. There are things in your life that are waiting for your action. There are things that will never move, that will never be done, that will never take place until something is done. There are things that are a response to um, the actions of men. There are things that without the actions of men, nothing is going to happen. In fact, even the things that are gifts to, God, are gifts to us from God are still things that cost God something. For example, your salvation. How many of us agree with me that your salvation is a gift? This, your salvation is a gift outside of works. So you are not saved by works. You are saved by grace through faith. But then you... Um, for that transaction, for that to take place, it's required for Jesus, for his blood to be shed on the cross. So as much as it was a gift to you, there was a transaction that took place for you to be saved. No declaration in the world, no, no words, no actions could have saved you. The blood of bulls and sheep could not have saved you. It had to take the blood of Jesus for you to be saved. God had to put his only son on a cross and slay him and kill him so that he would have eternal life. The Bible says that he was made poor that we may be there was a transaction for you to come into wealth. There was a transaction that brought you into the covenant of wealth. The Bible says that they who belong to Jesus are part of the covenant of Abraham. But for you to belong to that covenant, there had to be blood that was shed. So even the things that are gifts to you were bought by somebody. Even the gifts that look like they come freely to you. I want you to know that there are things that men walk in that they don't work for. There are, men, there are things that people walk in they don't work for. But there was somebody that worked that another generation may not work for what they have. There were people who prayed for you to be where you are today. There is an investment that has gone into the ground for you to be where you are today. There is a transaction. There has to take a man of God to decree for you where you are today for it to happen. It took for your pastor to stand and 
and say that this curse, that this issue comes to an end, this limitation is broken. The transaction was that the man spoke and by the speech of a man in authority, something shifted in your life. It's a world of transaction. Outside of transactions, men do not rise. Outside of transactions, men do not rise. You understand that the Bible says that it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. This is important that I say because as much as there are transactions in the spirit, there are transactions that are inferior and transactions that are superior. So the blood of bulls and goats was used to trade for the appeasement of God against the sin of man. That means that when people sinned against God, every year okay, whether they sinned or not, every year a high priest would carry blood to go and appease God so that his wrath would not rise up against men. The blood of bulls and goats. But that transaction was was not enough to completely and forever quench the wrath of God against men until God had to give his son that became the superior transaction the superior transaction that brought you into a place of eternal life so that you never have to uh, uh, shed blood another day for your salvation. Never will you have to give a seed for your salvation. Never will you have to give a sacrifice for your salvation. For your salvation there was the ultimate seed that was given by God. There are men that give ultimate sacrifices. There are men that conduct ultimate transactions actions so that in their generation their children will never be poor so that their children will never know sickness so that their children will never know rejection there are transactions that are inferior and transactions that are good so Jesus comes into the earth and when he comes into the earth he tells his his disciples one day that I as much as I love you, I have to go. I have to go. This is in John 16 verse 7. He says, I have to go. Why must I go? He says, it is for your own good. It is for your own benefit. It is for your own profit. It is profitable to you. Transaction. It is profitable to you that I go. Why? In me going, the advocate will come. If I do not go, the Bible says, unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. I want to explain something real quick. Jesus was with his disciples for three and a half years. He was with Peter for three and a half years. He was with Thomas for three and a half years. Jesus was a hundred percent man, but Jesus was a hundred percent God. His disciples were with him for three and a half years and they still had the audacity to deny him. They were with God. But they could not stand in the day of trial. In the day of adversity, they could not stand. Why? Because it was not enough for Jesus to be. That transaction was important for salvation. But for men to be sealed unto that salvation, there needed to be an outpouring of the Spirit of God to build men into boldness. For men to serve God and be unmoved, it needed, there needed to be the transaction of Jesus going away. That, that, that his spirit would come and empower men permanently for boldness in service. Transaction. So Peter, so Jesus goes and the spirit of God comes and, and Jesus says, I need you to wait. If you can reduce a bit down. I need you to wait. I need you to wait on me. I need you to tarry so that the spirit of God will come. And the Bible says that you shall receive what? When? When the spirit of God shall come upon you. You shall receive power transaction. The spirit comes and when the spirit comes, you receive power. Power. So the men that were flaky, remember, Peter could not be counted on. Peter was a passionate man. Peter loved Jesus. He was a passionate man. He was a zealous man. He was a man that loved the Lord. But that was a man that was fighting in the flesh despite being with God. When he would defend Christ, he would take a sword and slash somebody's ear. But when it was him in trouble... He would say, I don't even know him. But because of a transaction, 
because of a spiritual transaction that happened, the very man that was flaky, the very man that could not be counted on, the very man that was fighting in the flesh is the same man that would say that, remember, he was defending Christ with a sword. The Bible says that in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared. I hope we're together. Always be prepared to give a logical defense for what you believe. The defense that Peter would give was by sword, by a sword, by the flesh. Until the Spirit of God came upon him. And then the defense that he would give is silver and gold. I have none. But I have something that I can transact with. I have something superior that I can transact with. Even if I had silver and gold silver and gold will leave you in this state silver and gold will buy you food but it will not have you walk silver and gold will give you a house silver and gold will give you a car but i have a transaction that is superior to the transaction of money i have the spirit of god upon me i have the name of jesus i have the power of god that i carry because i waited in the secret place and by that name i come command you rise up and walk it is about time that we begin to transact at a higher dimension at a higher dimension that we have been operating on this is not the time for you to sit back unless you do something some things are going to remain the same unless you shift in your level of operation certain things are going to re remain the same i came to charge you up and to stir you up and tell you there is a dimension of power there is a place we don't transact because we have money in the bank there is a place we don't transact because we know a big name knowing a big name was good at a certain level having money in the bank was good at a certain level but at another level it is not enough to have a bank account at a certain level it is not enough to know someone in high places there is a dimension that we come into where we say whether I have silver or gold or whether I don't that I can transact in a superior level. That is the level I can say in the name of Jesus Christ. The name that I transact by. The faith that I transact by. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. The men that could not preach to save their lives. The men that did not understand anything the men that saw and could not do the same men that would cast out demons and the demons look at them and say peter we know and and, and no this is the way there, there is a time that the disciples went to cast out demons and they refused to go the same disciples and at this time uh, they didn't have the power but by the time the spirit of god was coming upon them something began to shift even on their faith levels I came to tell you today, listen, it is important for you to keep shifting in your transaction levels. The understanding of the matter of transaction is crucial because it offers the picture of the systems by which men rise. It is ignorant men who sit and wait for God to do things for them. It is children that hold out their hand and just say, give me. Give me, give me. You know, I, we, we, our children are all below nine years old. And our children, when they need something, the older one can go to the kitchen and go to the fridge. The fridge is not locked. The fridge is not locked. But the younger two will still come to us when they know the way to the kitchen. When they know how to open the door. When they know how to carry something out of the fridge. But still, they will come all the way to our room and say, please, I need some water. And we are like, I don't understand. Do you know where the tap is? I do. Do you know where the cups are? I do. But yet you are coming all the way to get... There are children in the spirit who do not know how to transact in the things of faith instead of going to get what god said was theirs instead of uh, of of acting they are uh, they act like the brother of the prodigal son they have everything and yet they have nothing they have everything they are waiting for god to put it on their hands but I understand that how we 
receive from God is not, is not necessarily that God placed something on your hand. It's that he released it and anybody who wants it can lambano it. Transaction. The men who God wants to use in this dimension are mature sons who can go to God and say, I know you are not a waster of resources. I am here to offer myself for you to do what you need to do through me. This is the generation that we have come into that says this is what I bring to the table. You don't go to God and say, God, I have nothing. I am nothing. I am but nothing. I am nothing, but I want something. No, no, no. Please remember the one that had nothing. Even that nothing was taken away from him. If you have nothing, then don't even, do, there is no transaction for you. But if you know that you have something that you bring to the table, when you go to pray, you say, God, I know you have equipped me with something. On the inside of me, there is something. On the inside of me is faith to believe you for the impossible. This is the currency I choose to transact with. I know those bills are staring at me, but I choose to transact with my faith today and say, silver or gold, I may have none. Lord, is there anything that is impossible with you? With men, it may be impossible, but with you, nothing is impossible. We have come into the days when men do not transact from helplessness. I don't know. Me, I get so tired of helplessness. I don't know, Pasi. I don't know. What do, What are you able to do with your hands? I don't know. What are you able to bring? I don't know. What do you know? I don't know. And I'm like, I don't understand. What can I do for you? If you have nothing of your own. Those are children. And it was okay for you to be a child in the spirit at some point. But at some point you have to mature and say, God, are you looking for someone to preach the gospel? You have said that the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. I am not nothing. I can preach the gospel. I am not nothing. I can heal the sick. Are you looking for a worker? Here I am to do what you need done. Are you looking for someone to be a blessing? Here I am to be a blessing to someone. These are the days when you need to look at your ambassador and say, God, I know there is someone you want to bless today. Who do you need me to send money to? I know there is someone that needs food today. Who do you need me to feed today? I know there is a child whose school fees needs to be paid. Whose school fees do you need to pay? Whose school fees do you want paid? I know pastor has a need in the house of God. Which need do you need me to pay? You cannot be he, he, in Kikuyu means give me. He all the time, we say. You are like, every day, give me, Father, give me, Father, give me. One of these days, you cannot spend 12 hours in prayer every day of your life asking. There is a day you need to spend 12 hours telling God, I have this and this and this. Which one do you need? I have this and this and this. Which one do you need? This is how we transact in the spirit. For a child to be born, a man and a woman must come together, one releasing seed and one, uh, one receiving to incubate. At nine months transaction, at nine months, despite how a woman may have enjoyed her pregnancy, a, a child must be re released from the womb for both the mother and the child to have life. For men to rise, there has to be consistent transactions and awareness of those transactions in the spirit. Joseph had to be sold to be prime minister. Daniel had to be taken captive to become governor and manifest the power of God to a heathen generation. Jesus had to be put on a cross for us to be saved. Ruth had to leave her own behind to follow Naomi if she was ever going to meet Boaz and come to be in the lineage of Jesus. No man that is not willing, to, that is not, no man gains that is not willing to lose. Very important. No man gains that is not willing to lose. And no man gains that, that holds on to what he lost. This is what the Bible says in Matthew 16, verse 26. Are we together? Uh, are we together? I'll need more than two responses. Are we together? What good will it be for, uh, for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? 
Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? The men who choose their soul, the men who choose the world, lose their soul. The transaction is that you choose the world or you choose God. If you choose the world, you lose your soul. The transaction is your soul. However, Matthew 19, 29, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much. What are they going to receive? What are they going to receive? Uh -huh. What are they going to receive? Is it eternal life? I want us to read this scripture properly. If anyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands, for what? So the sacrifice was what we have read. For my name's sake will receive many, even a hundred times more. More, what is that more? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so are you giving up things for Christ to become poor? According to this scripture, are you giving up everything for Christ to become, for you to become frustrated? Are you be giving up everything for you to be single forever and for you to be, no. Are you giving up everything for you never to own land? You are giving up everything and not giving up anything. That as you give up your life to God, you are literally taking up your life. That giving your life to God is securing your relationships. Giving up everything to God. This is how we secure our destiny. This is how we secure our wealth. What you're doing today being here, you're not wasting time. You are securing your destiny. You are securing your children's destiny. You are securing your land. You are securing the things that are not seen. This is how you are securing them. By giving up everything for God. And then eternal life. Glory to God. So the one that chose the world loses his soul. The one that chooses Christ receives everything transaction what a beautiful transaction this one is what kind of transaction is this you give god everything then he says it's okay i will give you a hundred times of what you have brought and i'm going to give you eternal life on top of that there are things that are waiting for you to give up for you to come into more this is what happened with hannah hannah had been praying to god for many years are we together Hannah had been praying to God for many years. And as, he, as she prayed to God, nothing was happening. Literally, nothing was happening in Hannah's life. She was praying and praying and praying and nothing was happening. Something shifted. No, before something shifted, I want you to know that God was committed to give Hannah a child from the beginning. But God was not going to give a child to stay in the house. Heaven needed a prophet in Israel. Heaven needed to give a prophet to Israel. So until Hannah got to the place where she can say, I give up, that what you give me, I'm going to give it to you. She was not going to receive a child. Because God had no interest whatsoever in giving yet another woman a child. He was interested in giving her a child so that he would have a prophet in Israel. Some of the things that you need, God is eagerly waiting to release eagerly eagerly but your mode of transaction is inferior to what he needs done wow. the package is ready the release is there but your mode of transaction is still baby class daniel prayed for 21 days Daily transacting in the spirit. The answer was released on day one. If he had given up on day one, he would still be waiting for his answer. If he would have given up on day one, he would still be waiting for his answer. Some of us just need to come up hither 
Just come up here a bit and ask God, what do you need done? What do you need? I know the plan is to give me wealth. What do you need done with it? I know the plan is for you to give me a husband. What do you need done? Some of us promised God, Lord, if you give me a husband, I will serve you forever. I'm telling you the most complacent human beings can be women who are married to nice men. Eh? Women who are married to nice, her sister was serving the Lord diligently. She was in every Kesha, every outreach, every evangelism, every what. Wait until God answers with a nice guy. The chick is like, I have to, I have to ask my husband. My husband said no. He said I can't. I am so sorry, my husband, my husband generation, my husband, my ha my bae. My bae said we can't cash her anymore. You know now I'm no longer in the dimension of cleaning church. I can't be able to wipe the seat. God lifted me from that level. We are moving from one level of glory to another. Apostle said something very interesting. That God is a jealous lover. And God can, a lover can secure his love by ensuring that those things don't work out. I want you to know God is not punitive. He is not vengeful. But God is not a waster of resources. If God needs an intercessor, someone will intercede. Someone will intercede. Some of those people who are interceding are simply people who they have a thorn in their flesh. They can't, they can't get rid of it. That's why you have to do it now. Mature sons don't wait for wahala for them to transact. <laughs> a, a sweet lady yesterday was telling me that she has everything. Why should she pray? And in my mind, I was like, we need for us to rise up to the place, all of us, to the place where we can have it all and still lay ourselves prostrate and transact for our generation. We have to. We have got to transact for our generation. We have to. While children are, are changing their gender at three years old, we cannot be asleep. You cannot be satisfied because you got married. I don't get it. How? Instead of being empowered by a good relationship, you're being destabilized because you got married, 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 married. The people who never went to school got married. The first man got married. Anybody can get married. But not everybody can change a generation. How can you be satisfied because you got married? Something has got to shift in how we transact in the spirit. Something has to shift. I have two more minutes. Something, and I came to stir you up today that people who are beginning to say, Lord, I am here to transact for you. If you need something done in my generation, if you need someone to rise up and do evangelism, if you need someone to work miracles, Lord, if you need someone to raise the dead, God, if you need someone to lay hands on the Seeker. Lord, if you need the financier, I am here and I am ready. If you need someone to exemplify sacrifice, God, here I am to exemplify sacrifice for you. I refuse to transact at the level of children. I am here to transact maturely in the name of Jesus Christ. I am here to transact at the level of maturity in the name of Jesus. I want to read us one scripture. And then we pray. In the book of Acts, men come to God and start to God as in to bring wealth to the apostles. And when they begin to bring wealth to the apostles, somebody decides, says, I am going to sell my land and I am going to give my land. Tomorrow we'll be talking about vows. I'm going to give my land. The reason I'm reading this is because this is New Testament. This is New Testament. I am a grace teacher. Let me just point that out. This is New Testament that they say we want to transact with God. We sell our land and bring our wealth to God. New Testament. Ama, Acts you kwa wapi? Just jibumi. Acts is... Uh -huh. 
Okay, so some of you say, as long as it was before Jesus' death, it's not New Testament. Had Jesus died in Acts, he had, had he resurrected, had he ascended. So that is the reign of grace. The men promise to transact a certain way with God. Then they come and bring Wahala to the disciples, to the apostles. And they're like, we sold the land, the land that was theirs to begin with. The land that was theirs after they sold. After they sold, the money belonged to them. But they came and they say what? They bring the wrong figure and try to lie to God. What happens to them? God is looking for me. I want to tell you that God has very little, very little time for people that don't understand um, how to honor God with their word. Especially people who second guess themselves. But you say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to honor you in this way. I'm going to. God is in need of workers. Men who are ready to be sold out to him. Who say and do what they say. And this is not about money. This is about your heart. God is looking for somebody that is going to say, Lord, I am here to transact for you. But not just say because we are in a, a father conference. Not just say because you are under pressure. Men who say, even the day I don't have, I am serving you. Even the day you slay me, I am serving you. Even the days the fig does not bear fruit, I am serving you. Even the day, as long as you need a man to stand in the place of a transaction for you, you will find me right here. Can we just lift up our voice and say, God, we need you. Come on, just lift up your voice and begin to pray. Mm -hmm.